At the core of every good data management plan is documentation. It provides a context for your data, a detailed description of its attributes, and a manual for its use day to day, but also for its, for its rediscovery, reproduction, and reuse. Be it qualitative or quantitative data, your documentation should be a step-by-step -step description of the origin of the data and all of the choices you made in the treatment and analysis of your data and why you made them. The full list of reasons why we need to document a research project can vary, but some of the key ones to keep in mind are 1. A clear, organized and accessible documentation will help you and or your team work effectively and efficiently day to day, reducing, reducing duplication of work and allowing a way back if mistakes are made. 2. You've probably heard mention of research integrity and research transparency in one context or another. Good documentation of a research project ensures and communicates that you have a robust and transparent workflow and that all of your work is reproducible. 3. If you are collecting and maintaining good quality documentation from the start of the project, then you should have reusable and shareable dataset at the end of the project, with little additional work, giving you another output from your research. Documentation varies widely in content and format, from a simple readme file to machine-readable linked open data, or to none at all. There is no single right way. But there are lots of wrong ways or bad documentation. A good rule of thumb is to look at the data shared by your peers and ask, is the documentation provided sufficient? Could you reuse it? Or revisit some of your own old data and ask the same questions. How you document your project should be useful, informative and fit with the workflow and requirements of your discipline and project. Metadata is another word for documentation that accompanies your data and communicates its meaning. Metadata is data about data. Some metadata is intrinsic to the data collected, such as information collected and stored in, within a digital photograph. Other types are a result of the research process, such as codebooks or blank versions of the surveys that you used. But each of these give important information about the structure and composition of the data set. Some disciplines have developed metadata standards, which prescribe how research data is collected and documented, and a metadata standard is a way of establishing a common understanding of the semantic meaning of the data. These standards are generally universally recognised within a discipline or data type. A standard which everyone will have used is the ISO standard for units and measures, or an example of a discipline-specific standard is EML, or Ecological Metadata Language, which was developed to describe data typical of ecological or environmental sciences. It is also possible to create your own metadata. A data dictionary or codebook shared alongside a dataset is considered metadata. It is not an international standard, but once shared alongside your data, it allows a third party to understand the semantic meaning of your variable and the data, and for it to be read and understood by a wider audience. Metadata standards are well established in some disciplines, but in others they have only just begun development. To find out more about standards in your discipline, fairsharing.org is a good place to start, or any, any scholarly society related to your field of research. Now you know what you need, how are you going to capture all of this information? How will it be structured and organised? How does each piece of data collected relate to each other? And what does this mean for the supporting documentation and metadata? Thinking critically, would your current practices for capture of documentation and metadata be sufficient for you to reuse your own data in a few years' time? Would it meet the minimum standards required by a third party? Step into the shoes of another. How would they judge your data and documentation? Reusable or reuseless? A good way to recognize the documentation and metadata needs of your data is to formalize it, its capture and structure in a data management plan. In this way, you can build in standardized documentation throughout your project and plan for its retention alongside your data post-project, resulting in a shareable, reusable, reproducible dataset. Any questions or for advice in developing documentation and metadata for your research project, please contact the Research Data Service in UCC Library or check out our LibGuide. Thank you for listening.